intended to, to, to sense that God is at work among us. And uh, I was excited as well as I was uh, reading a few folks before the service began to recognize we have among us today at least a few people who were part of the first group ever baptized at this church in 1965. I don't know, maybe we have more, but I know we have at least two. Uh, Richard Lechtman is here, and uh, Mary Hens is we're part of the original group who were baptized at this church in 1965. And uh, maybe there were others as well, but it's kind of neat to have you here for this occasion as well. Uh, we are... Uh, we're going to hear the testimonies of young people who are discovering what it means to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul and strength and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And I'd like to share some thoughts with you from the scriptures today, not only to those who are being baptized, but to the rest of us who are witnessing this event. And I'm going to share my thoughts from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, a uh, letter from the Apostle Paul about being faithful to Christ even in the midst of challenges. Paul knew that there will be challenges, there will be hard times, and even as a Christian, he knew that those things would happen. But he also knew that God had a bigger purpose, and that, that he sees beyond the things that are so real and so immediate for us in the present moments. And so if I could just isolate a couple of verses for you today, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and they are printed in your bulletin for you. If you don't have a Bible along, you'll find them on the front page of your bulletin. And there's an outline of our brief presentation on the back as well. First of all, I would like you to remember that our faith is based on facts. Our faith is based on facts. Paul writes, for Christ's law compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. And the facts are that Jesus Christ was the sinless Savior who died for our sin. He was the one person who died for all, as referred to in this text. We, are, we were dead in our trespasses and sin. Ephesians chapter 2. But... He died for us. He died to give us new life now and a life that is eternal and not limited by this present age. And not only did Jesus die, he rose again and he lives today. And that might sound like an old message that probably everyone who's gathered here has heard before. And it might seem almost redundant to repeat it. But we need to remember that for centuries people have tried to disprove the claims of Christ. And it is not strange to our circumstances in society today. People have tried to disprove the claims of Christ. And at least some of the people who set out to disprove the, the, the claims of Christ found out that they were on the wrong side of the, of the question. And they came to Christ because they recognized that, the, the, that they could not disprove the facts that are reported for us. I'd like you to remember today that our faith is based on plain facts. It is clearly stated in the Bible, and it is tested by time. Paul wrote, we are convinced that one died for all. What are you convinced about? What are the things that you have convictions about? Paul said, we are convinced that one died for all. And I trust that that, that is our experience today, each and every one of us. It's not just up to the baptismal group to be the people who are convinced. We all are people who should be convinced of the basic facts of who Jesus is and what he has done for us and what is required of us as those who would follow him. And if we are convinced that what we've been taught from the Bible is true, then it's important that we understand what that means for us. It means that we need to live for him in every way and every day. We are called to obedience and live it out in practical ways in every part of our life. In verse 15 it says, He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Now 
our new life in Christ needs to be anchored in the values and the attitudes that Jesus teaches us through the scriptures. The values and the attitudes that Jesus teaches us through the scriptures. Our life as Christians is not about me. It's not about what I want. And as I was preparing this message this week, and as I was looking at in the course of my travels, I listened to ads on the radio. And ad, and, and I don't know if it's on the ads on television, but you can find it there too. They all want to tell us that we are the most important thing what I need, what I deserve. We live in a world that's geared to selfishness. Christ calls us away from that and to, to live for Him. And in living for Him, we look at the world differently. We do not live to, 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 to do that simply for our advantage. As Christians, it's not about me. It's about Christ living in me. We no longer have permission to live for ourselves alone. Jesus saved us to, to save us from that kind of life, and He saved us for the purpose that we would live for Him. I'd like you to say that with me. Jesus saved us to live for Him. Can you say it once more with conviction? Jesus saved us to live for Him. And He died and He rose again. And when we live for Jesus, we see the world differently than we did before. We start to understand that every person is important. And what I do and who I am affects others around me. And it will, it will bless them or encourage them and strengthen them and help them. Or it will be negative and unhelpful to them. It will be ways that will hurt. And if we listen to what God has to say to us through the Word and through the Holy Spirit, speaking in our hearts through the Word, he will challenge us to think differently and to act differently, to find new responses and even solutions to old issues. And as those who come to Christ, we do not have permission to live for ourselves. We need to have concern uh, for others, and we need to have respect for others. Our very deepest part of our inner person and our minds and our bodies belong to Him. And they are to be available for His service when we come. Let's ask the honest question. Are there selfish Christians in the world? The answer is yes. But one day, each one of us will give an account to Jesus for how we have lived our life as children of God. Each one of us will bear that responsibility before Him. But in the meantime, each one of us who knows the responsibility has the privilege of learning what it means to walk wisely and walk in his steps each day. There are no perfect Christians. We will not one day eradicate any propensity or opportunity or ability or inclination to be selfish and to be sinful. There are no perfect Christians. And those who are being baptized today have not arrived at perfection yet, just ask their moms and dads. You can smile about that. But, uh, but, they, but, but as we are trying to be aware of the reality of the fact that we still can make bad choices and choose to sin, it does not excuse us from knowing what is right. I would urge you to consider today as a point of no turning back, not only to those who are being baptized, but to the rest who are here today. This is a point of no turning back. And from here on, I am permitted to live for Christ and not for myself. From here on, I will measure my decisions about activities and my attitudes by His standards. When I am in doubt about an activity, I will postpone participation until I have clarified my thinking about it by consulting with God's Word and with those, but if, if necessary, with those who love Him as well. I will make a decision to not make decisions that compromise the values and standards that Jesus said we must follow. And as a person for whom Christ died, I will also choose to be active in serving. I do not need or to wait to be asked. I will look for we do not need to wait to be asked. When we are active in serving Christ with other Christians, we are more likely to stay.
steer away from the temptation to live for ourselves. And I know that our, in our baptismal group, I believe all of them are, are in uh, high school. And I want you to understand that living for Jesus needs to happen in school as well as in home. As well as in youth. I was to give you a summary statement today of uh, things to look forward to as, as young Christians. I would share this. First of all, start well. And I think we're doing it. If you've come to know that Christ is your personal Savior and you, you've weighed the things that we've had a lot of fun in our discipleship classes, exploring and learning about doctrine and Sometimes, for some of you, the lights went on and said, wow, I didn't know that before. And some new tools to help you understand. Uh, you can start well. And then you need to walk wisely. Walk wisely. And in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Pentecost. This is Pentecost Sunday. And uh, we remember the fact that God gave us the Holy Spirit to enable us and to empower us, to help us. And probably one of the most crucial lesson, lessons I learned as a young Christian was this. That yes, I love Jesus, but I was trying to do a bunch of things in my own strength. I would do this and do that and do the other thing. And, and then I learned that God didn't expect me to do it all in my own energy. He would give me what I needed. It doesn't mean I don't take myself along with the to do those things. But if you understand what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit helps us be at peace and at calm and understanding and delight as we go and do those things, as we seek to be faithful one day at a time. Don't worry about the big picture. Pay attention to the present moment. And we also need to finish well. Finish well. I thought of it as I was preparing. How many people have sat in these pews at Bethel Church or in the pews at some other church waiting for their turn to get up and share their testimony and go through the waters of baptism by pouring or by immersion. How many people have done that but then did not finish well? I can tell you a few. And for us who are here today, the journey is not complete. And we still face the challenge, the responsibility and the privilege of learning what it means to not only start well and walk wisely, but to also finish well. And I would like to encourage you to remember those three things and remember nothing else about the message this morning. That as we follow Jesus, he wants us to start well, walk wisely, and finish well. We need to remember that our faith is based on well-tested facts, we need to be convinced that our new life needs to be, is anchored in the values and the attitudes that Jesus teaches us in the scriptures. And we need to take active steps to start well, to walk wisely, and to finish well. Let's take a moment to pray again. Heavenly Father, we have tried to explore some basic concepts from the scriptures for our own well-being today. We recognize that Jesus died so that we could be forgiven and that we could have new life and live that new life here in this present and that we could follow you and learn what it means to follow you obediently and we want to not only start well we want to walk wisely and we want to finish well and I pray that you would give us all not only uh, 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 an agreement intellectually with that concept today, but a passion to be that kind of people. That we would do it in your power and in your energy and not in our own will and in our own strength and to prove how spiritual we are. And I ask that for our, those who are being baptized especially, that you would help them to remember these things and, and the things they have been learning in our classrooms from week to week. And as they've been learning in their journey, the things that you've taught them moment in their life. And I ask that you would help us to be a support to them as they continue to learn. We thank you for the privilege of worshiping you freely, of opening the word, and uh, learning from it. 
And I pray that uh, we would all be touched in new ways through this proclamation today. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now this morning, as we continue, we're going to have the privilege to baptize 11 individuals who have expressed their desire to be publicly identified with Jesus Christ. And in a few moments, they are going to share their testimonies with you, and we will witness their baptism. But I'd like to give us all just a few little pieces of information to help us be prepared for that occasion. First of all, the service today is not a performance. And I must have said that before somewhere, because as we were setting up this morning, one of the people helping get uh, the platform ready uh, heard me talking to the group and said, just remember, Pastor Andy, it isn't a performance. And I'm glad the message is getting through. Uh, it is not a performance any more than other formal occasions should be or would be, and we don't want them to be a performance. This is an act of worship, a time of worship together. In this service, we're going to witness the thoughtful and joyful expression of faith in Christ Jesus to those individuals who have responded in obedience to the words of our Savior to be baptized. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, I want to assure you that we have thoughtfully and prayerfully prepared for this service together. As a congregation, if you happen to notice an imperfection or two, just smile and accept it as we go. And uh, don't let it distract you from the joy of what we are witnessing together. It is the custom of our church to offer the choice of being baptized by pouring or by immersion. You may be familiar with one custom or the other. And uh, uh, you may not be familiar with seeing both of them done in the same service as we do here. But I would like to remind you that we regard both methods to be valid or we would not offer. And each person's baptism is a precious and significant moment, and we regard it to have equal dignity. For today's service, we will hear testimonies from, uh, from these folks. We're going to hear several at a time, and then baptize them. And the order is found in your bulletin as we plan to follow it today. I would ask that as each person is baptized, we would refrain from or wait until all have been baptized before we offer any uh, congregational response. <coughs> this is a great day for these men and women in a personal walk with the Savior. And it's a great day for the Church of Jesus Christ. And it's a great day for Bethel Church. And may our God be honored in all we say and do. I do want you to know that uh, pictures uh, are being taken of, of, of especially the baptismal portion of the service today, and copies of them will be made available for those who would like prints. And so we want to put you at ease that there should be copies available uh, for those of you to whom that is of special interest. And uh, so I thank you for your careful attention to those announcements today. I asked the group if they were nervous, and some of them were. And some of them weren't quite sure if they were nervous. I told them Pastor Harold and I were nervous, so that was okay if they were too. We would like to do this to bring honor to the Lord. We're going to ask uh, Jake Fair and uh, Derek Lechman to come first of all, and uh, they have selected baptism by pouring. We're going to ask them to come and share testimonies with us here, and then we will baptize them one after.
One night he asked me if I was saved. I had to say no. At the time I didn't know what it meant to be a Christian. All I knew is that if I wasn't saved, I was going to hell. That was enough to convince me, and the next morning I asked the Lord to be my Savior. As usual, the devil will put roadblocks in the path. One of these in my life came last summer. I wanted to work at Bible camp. I really wanted to go because I could do what I loved, be in the outdoors, and serve God at the same time. At this time, I had just gotten my driver's license, and like every teenager, I wanted my own car. I could have worked all summer and had my car by the end, but God had other plans for me and I ended up working at camp. God has helped me along the path a lot. He has spoken to me in many ways. Sometimes it's through other people, sometimes it's the small voice inside my head. The main way he has helped me is by leading me in, in my Christian life. I now request baptism upon the confession of my faith. Please pray for me as my journey will be not will not be easy. I would like to thank the pastors and the church for your support. Hi, I'm Derek Lightman, son of John and Helen Lightman. I grew up in a Christian home and have gone to a Mennonite church my entire life. When I was four years old, I accepted Jesus as my personal savior. My great-grandmother had just passed away and I asked my mom where she went to after she died. My mom told me she was in heaven and explained to me how to get there. It all sounded really awesome, so that day my mom led me to the Lord. A few years later, and as I went to the Bible camp, I decided to rededicate my life to Jesus, be more aware of the sin of my life and the need for a change in my lifestyle. Even after that, though, I still went through a lot of struggles with sin and trying to live a Christian life on my own strength. I made, I made decisions that I shouldn't have and sometimes didn't even understand why I made those decisions. This caused me to doubt my faith at times and wonder how I could struggle so much if I really had the Holy Spirit living inside of me. Thankfully, God was able to help me find answers to the questions that had been troubling me after a lot of prayer and time spent reading my Bible. God helped me realize that even though I'll continue to struggle with sin for the rest of my life, but through God I can have it the strength to overcome sin and do anything he wants me to. The verse that's encouraged me with this is Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Although it's taken a long time, God's helped me to learn to obey him better and trust in him. Time and time again, God has provided for me, even though I don't deserve it at all. In wanting to be baptized, I'm not saying that the journey's over, but that's because I want to be baptized upon the confession of my faith because it's what God wants me. I want to become a member of this church because it shares the same beliefs as I do, and because I want to become more of a part of what goes on in the church. Thank you.
grace in the door, and he was ready to go. Not necessarily the first to contribute, but certainly eager to answer, and he thought through his answers, but he had contributions to make, and it's been exciting as well. Derek, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only Son of God, that he died for us again, and that he lives today? Have you personally accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and is it your desire to be obedient to him through your life? On the basis of your request to be baptized in, in obedience to Jesus' command and having heard your testimony, I now baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
I did not want to go to hell. So mom led me in a prayer and I went back feeling peace and not worrying anymore. Since that day, I've given my life over to God again and again, not really to be sure of my salvation. Now that I can understand God's free gift of salvation, I don't have to worry anymore. I have been going to Bethlehem ever since grade 7 or 8, and Carolyn leaders have been a great example for me. I would like to thank my mom especially for being a godly example in my life and encouraging me to put God's word on the top priority of my life. My favorite Bible verse of mine is 1 Peter 5 verse 7, which says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. That means no matter what, you can tell God all your problems, and he will always be there for you. I wish to be baptized upon the confession of my faith and to become a member of this church, because I really feel welcome better than this church.
Holy Son of God, that He died and rose again for the sins of all the people of lives today. Have you personally accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and it is your desire to live a life that is obedient to Him and to the instructions of the Bible? On your basis of your request to be baptized in obedience of, to Jesus, and the command and have the word, your testimony and profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ontario was a drastic change in my life. The people in Ontario weren't as welcoming as in Winkler and 
I was one of the few Christians at school. My faith is constantly being put to the test by people at school, but I formed friendships there too, and eventually I was accepted by the school's population. We only lived there for eight months or so when we moved back to Winnipeg. I'm just happy to see all my friends again, and I'm very happy to be back. My faith has been growing a lot in the last few weeks, and I went on a youth retreat and found out that Christ can speak to you in many different ways through people and worship and stuff. And going to youth is always a good time for me, and I've learned a lot from Pastor Harold and the other youth pastors in my life. In my, life. my parents have always been a shining example for me in my walk with God. They helped me a lot by being there when I needed it and helping me. I want to leave you with my favorite Bible verse that has helped me throughout my life. It's found in Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I want to become a member at Bethel Berkeley Mennonite Church because I think it's my next step. Have you personally accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and it is your 
your desire to live a life that is obedient to Him and to the instruction of the Bible and God's Word? On the basis of your request to be baptized in obedience to Jesus Christ's command, and having heard your testimony and confession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and My mom sat me 
down and explained to me how Jesus had died for me. I realized that I was a sinner and needed Jesus to come into my life. I had often heard about the crucifixion in Sunday school, but had never actually realized that he had died for me too. I wasn't perfect like I thought I was. When my mom asked me if I wanted to become a Christian, I knew that that was what I wanted. I wanted to go to heaven. I knew I was a sinner and wanted him to Throughout the years, I have developed a deeper relationship with God and have grown in my faith. He has helped me through my struggles and shown me awesome things. I have learned the hard way to give everything up to God for Him to handle. I can do nothing without Him. He is my strength. My whole, whole attitude changed when I became a Christian. I began to think more of others and less of myself. One of my favorite verses is Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in on your own in all their ways acknowledge him, and he will make my path straight. This verse assures me that if I trust in Jesus, everything will work out, even if I don't understand it. My mom has really influenced me to love God. She has really challenged me and encouraged me to seek a deeper relationship. I am really thankful. One of the things God has shown me is that he wants me to use my gifts for him. Over the last few years, I have been using my gifts more for God's glory. I pray for boldness, that I will be willing to serve when or where he asks. I want to be baptized as a confession of my faith. I want to live for Jesus and be a missionary wherever I am. I want others to experience the love of Jesus Christ, as I have, and I am willing to go wherever he needs me. I know there will be times where I will fail because I am not perfect, but I will do my best with God. Greet them now and 